Hello all, in this video we are going to discuss about various types of sampling methods. Sampling is the procedure or the technique by which the sample required for the research is taken from the population and after completing the study results the conclusion will be for the population. So we need to have a considerable number of this sample and this determination is called a sample size calculation and the process by which we select this sample from the population is called as sampling. What is target population, what is study population and what is sample. Sample or the study subjects which we are handling in our own study whereas study population is the one where we attempted to do the same study but they were not able to participate in the study due to the sampling procedure on the other hand the target population is the population who otherwise would have become the study population suppose if we are looking at diabetic food among diabetes patients in our hospital so the sample included in our study will be considered as the diabetes patients which we have included in the study and the diabetes patients who are coming to the hospital will be considered as the study population and the diabetes patients staying in the locality will be considered as the target population. Sometimes we call population universe that is all diabetic patients, diabetes mellitus patients will be considered as the population universe. So from population universe target population is the diabetes patients in our locality and from diabetes patients whomever is attending our hospital will be considered as study population and from that study population actually who are all included in the study will be termed as the study sample and the process by which we take the sample from the study population is called as sampling. So I repeat again from the study population through the sampling technique we select our own sample and after completing the study in the study sample we provide inference or conclusion to the whole population and if this sampling is effective this extrapolation or otherwise called as generalizability will be very good when the sampling technique is followed properly and at this junction I want to make you clear that sampling is not equal to randomization. Here as I told sampling is the procedure or the technique by which we take the sample from the population. On the other hand randomization is used in the intervention studies or experimental studies when we are dividing the study sample into two groups say for example A and B receiving two interventions and the division of these groups will be based on a method that method is called as randomization randomization. So randomization is the procedure or the process by which the study participants will be divided into study and control groups and this is not related to sampling. This is after sampling you divide it into groups and this happens only in interventional studies or experimental studies and you should not confuse between sampling and randomization. Now why we need an effective sample? An effective sample should be proper representative of the population as a whole and also if we take larger or the entire sample then for that we may not have adequate resources such as money, time and skilled manpower and the data analysis and analysis will be easier if we select a small population instead of selecting a bigger study population or even bigger target population. So if we are able to make conclusions from this study sample and we can be able to provide conclusions or inferences for this entire study population we can do that effectively. So coming to the topic the types of sampling methods in this present we are going to deal about the various types of sampling methods which we are using in research. Sampling methods can be broadly classified into probability sampling or non-probability sampling otherwise called as random sampling or non-random sampling. Random sampling is a procedure that assures all the participants or the units in the population have equal probabilities to participate in the study or being chosen in the sample that is called as a random sampling. In non-random or non-probability sampling each and every every unit will not get the equal opportunity to participate in the study. That is the procedure in which the units in the sample are collected with no specific probability structure. So the equal probability provided in this random sampling technique will not be present here. We move on to the types of sampling methods. As I told we have two broad types probability sampling and non-probability sampling. In healthcare research most commonly this probability sampling will be used in community based studies whereas non 
probability sampling techniques will be used in hospital based studies but there will be some exceptions depending upon the setup where this probability and non probability sampling are used in different settings such as community and hospital based under probability sampling methods we have simple random sampling systematic random sampling stratified random sampling cluster sampling and also multi stage sampling and we have multi phasic sampling under non probability sampling we have convenient sampling judgment or purposive sampling snowball sampling and quota sampling these are all the commonly used non probability sampling methods each and every type is going to be dealt in detail in this presentation so first is the simple random sampling it is the basic type of random sampling most commonly used and it is the easiest method to use each member of the population has the equal and known probability of being selected as a study sample say for example in this list of study participants we select randomly these study samples and what are all the steps involved in doing a simple random sampling we need to select a population list or the sampling frame then we need to decide the sample size as usual after deciding on the sample size we select this samples randomly by various methods and this drawing the sample can be done by either by lottery method currency method use of random number table or can be drawn from generating random numbers using software so this is lottery method where you have this you will draw the list of participants one by one and include in your study and the second one is the currency method we can take randomly a currency and we can note down the numbers suppose if your desired sample size is within two digits then you, you can look at the last two numbers then you can go like this and you can select these samples so that is the currency method and random table method you can point a pin or throw a dice to this table and wherever it lands then you can select that number suppose if you want a three digit number then you can go for the number followed by the number which is pointed by the pin or the dice same way you can select different different numbers and you can select those samples now what are all the advantages and disadvantages of simple random sampling the sample will be more representative of the population and the population estimate is also easy to calculate whereas what are all the disadvantages of simple random sampling we need the list of population to do this simple random sampling and it is impracticable when the population is large and the minority subgroups of interest may not have sufficient representation in the sample next we move on to systematic random random sampling where we select the first unit or first participant randomly and the rest is selected automatically according to a predetermined pattern or a systematic pattern then the pattern involves regular spacing of units here in this example we have selected this third unit randomly then after that every eighth individual is included in the study so how to do this systematic random sampling is we need to know the population size remember here we need not require the list of all participants but the population size the overall total population number itself is enough to perform a systematic random sampling from that we prepare a sampling frame as usual the second step is calculating the desired sample size and we calculate the sample interval which is given by the formula population size divided by sample size that is capital n by small n which gives the k as a sampling interval then we need to select a random number between 1 and k that is 1 and the sampling interval then after that every k element or unit will be included in the study so this is the way we do the systematic random sampling so here is one more example as i told it can be used when the list is not available so to pick up 150 houses from a total of 450 houses so the sampling interval become 3 so between 1 and 3 we will select randomly a sampling unit so that is 1 and 3 here we have selected the second participant and after that every third individual will be selected because the sampling interval here is 3 so this follows a systematic pattern and this sampling is called as systematic random sampling and the advantages of this systematic random sampling sample is evenly spread over the entire population easy to select also the disadvantages of this method it may have a certain pattern or a periodicity when this systematic sampling is followed and the precision of estimate is less when compared to the simple random sampling method the next probability sampling method is the stratified random sampling method both in systematic random sampling and simple random sampling we have told that the sub 
subgroups which are composing minority in the study population have a high chance of getting missed from the studies in order to address that we have this stratified sampling we use this stratified sampling when we have a heterogeneous population population is divided into mutually exclusive categories like this three categories and sampling units are heterogeneous between categories but homogeneous within each category so these categories are called as strata that's why this is called a stratified random sampling and after stratification from each stratum independent samples are selected using any of the known sampling methods and again this may be simple random sampling or systematic random sampling so based on that we select individuals or units from the strata so if simple random sampling is performed in each stratum it's called as stratified random sampling if systematic random sampling is performed then it is called as stratified systematic sampling and how to do this is first we need to select the study population as usual the second step will be the calculating the sample size then we need to identify the relevant strata whose units share at least one characteristic so based on that we select the sample frame for each stratum then we follow simple random or systematic random sampling of units from each stratum these are the steps involved in stratified random sampling so whenever the population is divided into two or more groups called a strata the sub samples are randomly selected from each strata so here we have the list of clients so we divide based on the ethnicity we divide it into groups and based on this ethnicity strata we select randomly these participants and this random samples will yield the study samples and the advantage of this is every unit in the stratum has equal chance of being getting selected and adequate representation of minority subgroups will be there and the disadvantage of this method is it is necessary to have the information regarding the characteristics which is used for stratification and separate sampling frame has to be prepared for each strata and it affects the proportional representativeness of subgroups in the sample as a whole we move on to the fourth probability method of sampling that is the cluster sampling the population is divided into subgroups or clusters like families a simple random sample is taken from each cluster so if this is the study area and we have different section of population residing we select clusters from various sections and involve these families into the study or these clusters into our study that is the basic of this cluster sampling and cluster sampling will be used whenever the population is heterogeneous within and they are homogeneous between themselves clusters can be either natural or artificial we select these two clusters into the study it can be cities villages schools hostels and industrial areas we select certain number of clusters as sample from the population of clusters all units in the selected cluster are included in the study for example classes considered as clusters and a sample of classes will be included all students in the selected class will be included in the study so here are the steps for cluster sampling we need to list all the clusters in this case we are going with villages with their individual population so we are listing the villages a b c and its population like this we need to determine the sampling interval by total cumulative population this is the total cumulative population and the total number of clusters here we are going with 10 number of clusters so we need to divide this 5800 divided by 10 which will yield 5080 as the sampling interval so we need to select a random number which is less than or equal to the sampling interval so between 1 to 580 we select a random number and fell somewhere in the b group so we have selected this village for the first cluster by adding the sample interval that is 580 to this cluster the second and the subsequent clusters are selected so if we are adding the 580 here from the random number which we selected so the second cluster falls here so the third cluster also falls here and if we are adding 580 to that random number it provides fourth and fifth in the village f six the cluster in the village g and seventh cluster in the village h and eighth and ninth cluster in the village i tenth cluster in the village j so after selection of these clusters survey can be started the first house for the survey in each cluster is selected randomly with the help of random number table again or we can provide or we can proceed with the lottery method or a currency note method so what are all the advantages of cluster sampling here the sampling frame of the population is not required as selected cluster is studied completely this results in increase in number of subjects in the sample without increase 
in cost and results can be obtained in lesser time so the study can be little fast also it saves time and cost of data collection and if clusters are homogeneous within clusters then it may produce cluster effect that will be the disadvantage with this cluster sampling we move on to the next probability sampling method that is multi stage sampling and this is different from multi phasic sampling which we are going to deal next here this is multi stage sampling so this is a sampling method used when population is large scattered heterogeneous in nature it is used for large scale surveys sampling is carried out in stages so we select some states and under which we select some districts under which we select some villages under which we select some households at each stage the selection of the states districts will be will follow a different method which may be a systematic sampling method or simple random sampling method or clusters or again stratified random sampling so if they follow more than one sampling method at different level then that is called as multi stage sampling so the definition of sampling unit changes with each stage in the first stage identification and selection of large sampling units in the second stage fix, fixed number of population sampling units may be enumerated from each of the selected group or clusters more than two stages can be involved so here is one example suppose if you are selecting 1200 higher secondary school students from a school in a city we are going to follow two stage sampling that is we are going to select 20 out of these 100 schools using simple random sampling and in that 20 schools we are going to select 60 students from each of those 20 that makes our 1200 desired sample size so out of the total number of higher secondary students in each of the selected schools so this selection may be either systematic or simple random sampling or stratified random sampling so when we are doing this more than one type of sampling in different stages that is called as multi stage sampling the advantages of this multi stage sampling are sampling is spread over the entire population sampling frame of entire population is not required and the cost is reduced every unit in each stage has equal chance of getting selected and it saves time and cost also the disadvantage with this multi stage sampling method is sampling error will be high when compared to the simple random sample next we move on to the multi phase sampling and this is not multi stage sample this is multi phase sample the sixth and last probability method of sampling it involves the collection of basic information on a larger sample size for example you do a screening examination for all the population and from those screened individuals you do the diagnostic test so then it becomes a multi phase sampling so which will be followed by successive collection of more specific information for successive sub samples out of the earlier sample so this is called as multi phasic sample so this screened individuals will be subjected to a proper diagnostic test and from which we apply the test and find the prevalence so in that case this will become a multi phase sampling so when in this multi phase sampling used is whenever there is not enough money is available to collect the complete information from each unit of the entire sample then we go for this multi phase sampling the cost of collection varies from one aspect to another whenever the collection of information on all aspects would create an excessive burden we go for this multi phase sampling we move on to the second category of sampling that is non probability type of sampling this non probability will be most commonly used in hospital based in institution based studies so the most common type is the convenience sampling quota sampling judgmental sampling or purposive sampling snowball sampling and self selection sampling we are going to see the first type of non probability sampling that is convenience sampling convenience sampling involves choosing respondents at the convenience of the researcher the advantages of this method of sampling is it is at very low cost extensively used and it is understood clearly so that the person who recruit individuals will do it correctly disadvantages are variability and bias cannot be measured or controlled projection of data beyond the sample is not justified and the generalization will be restricted so that is the convenient sampling we have one more sampling called as consecutive sampling that is it's the same type as the convenient sampling so we are taking whoever is coming to us according to the convenience of the researcher one by one the patient comes you are recruiting till your sample size ends that is called as consecutive sampling and the second non probability sample we are going to deal with is the quota sampling 
here the population is first segmented into mutually exclusive subgroups just as we do that in stratified sampling here we divided it into subgroups and we decide on the numbers expected to be included in the studies from each subgroups and we recruit them through a non probability method instead of a probability method we do the same process with the non probability method and when we do that that is that will be called as quota sampling the advantage of this quota sampling it is used when research budget is limited very extensively used and it is easily understood no need for list of population elements and the disadvantages are the variability and bias cannot be measured or controlled it is little time consuming also projecting beyond sample is not justified that, that is the generalizability is restricted so here is the example for the quota sampling so you are trying to do a survey among people who are listening to the radio you want to interview 500 people you have formed a quota with 60 percentage of housewives and 25 percentage of farmers and 15 percentage of children under the age of 15 based on the personal judgment here this is the crucial factor to be called as the quota sampling because this is based on a non probability sampling method if it is a by a probability sampling method then we call it as a stratified sample similar to stratified sampling method here we are doing this as a non probability method so we include 300 housewives that is 60 percentage and 25 percentage of farmers 75 under 15 children we get this sample size of 500 people and when we do this for a study this is called as quota sampling we are going to the third non probability method that is the judgment sampling or this is otherwise called as purposive sampling it is a non probability sampling technique where the researcher selects units based upon the knowledge and personal judgment also known as purposive sampling or authoritative sampling the merits of this judgment sampling only small number of sampling units required and when we are studying an urgent public policy business decisions this judgment sampling can be used the demerits will be personal prejudice and bias will be there no objective way of evaluating reliability of results proceeds on the belief that researcher knows enough about the population and its element to hand pick the sample the most common reason for this judgment will be the desired results so the desired results will decide whom to get included in the study so when we do that that is the judgment sampling or purposive sampling the fourth type of non probability sampling is snowball sampling this is otherwise called as referral sampling a sampling technique where existing subjects recruit future subjects from among their acquaintances sample group appears to grow like a rolling snowball as the sample size build up enough data is gathered to be useful for the research it is useful for understanding social network connecting the hidden problems like drug users commercial sex workers or even the diseases with stigma such as leprosy or not selected randomly therefore it is subject to bias people who have many friends are more likely to be recruited into the sample that is the disadvantage with this snowball sampling or referral sampling here is the technique of this snowball sampling so the first participant included in the study will provide information about the next participant and they will be included in the study if we do that from 1 to 1 to 1 this is called as linear snowball sampling if we do from 1 to 1 1 and from there to 1 1 1 include all these samples then it is called as exponential snowball sampling if we include all the preferred patients then it is called as non discriminative exponential snowball sampling if we are not including certain group of individuals then it will become discriminative exponential snowball sampling so that is how we do this snowball sampling the advantages of this snowball sampling method is the chain referral process allows the researcher to reach the population that are difficult to sample when we are using other sampling techniques say for example the diseases with high stigma and antisocial risk factors can be assessed through this snowball sampling method it is cheap simple and cost effective also only little planning is required fewer workforce required for this process the disadvantage of this method is little control over the sampling method as we told those who have more friends will be included in the study representativeness of the sample is not guaranteed and this method needs high reliability among the patients towards the researchers or the people who conduct the study the last type of non probability method is the self selection sampling it occurs when you when you allow each unit to identify their desire to take part in the research this is called as self selection sampling the results will be more accurate useful in 
specific circumstances to serve the purpose more costly as it requires more advertisement and majority of the mass will be left out and it can cause selection bias also that is especially volunteer bias will be there volunteer bias will be there so that is the last type of on probability sampling method so the summary of this presentation is the process by which we select the sample from the study population is called as sampling and the inference or the conclusion or the generalizability will be for the entire study population it is broadly divided into two types that is probability sampling method and non probability sampling method and under probability sampling method we had simple random sampling cluster random sampling systematic random sampling stratified random sampling multi stage sampling multi phase sampling this sampling methods are most commonly used in community based or field based studies on the other hand the non probability sampling methods are convenient sampling the consecutive sampling is a sub type of this convenient sampling we had judgmental or purposive sampling we had snowball or referral sampling we had quota sampling and also the self selection sampling also were there and this non probability sampling methods will be most commonly used in hospitals or other institutions that is about the type of sampling methods if you like this video please click on the like button and share it to your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe thanks for watching